one thing stands between the darkness and carnage. Dreamkeepers, the graphic novel saga, available only at dreamkeeperscomic.com. Thank you for watching, because that took me months to animate, frame by frame by... Now, normally you don't see commercials made by, like, a guy. Usually they're corporate financed by executives and such because they're promoting corporate products which were assembled in some boardroom. So the demographics are telling us that is that kids love boy wizards. And you know what else is huge right now? Vampires. So listen, we're gonna hire the best talent, big name producers, writers, directors, top notch artists, celebrity guest stars, and we're gonna throw a five million budget at this thing. And we're gonna make a series that magically sucks. Yeah, that's not where we're coming from. We're making an actual, real story here. Dave, are you talking to the wall again? Yes, that's Liz. We're the authors, the artists, we published the comic, and... Okay, okay, stop right there. Yes, it's a comic, and I know the mental image you get when someone drops the C word. I'm clenching everything! Captain Contrivance, I thought you... Died like nine times! Ha! Yes! But one was a clone, there was that time traveling paradox throwaway, and the, in the Universal Rewrite Edition, you see it was re rewritten! Oh, I take you seriously now! <gasps> Look out! It's expository dialogue! So. So, listen, I'm not going to all this trouble because I'm satisfied with what's already out there. Think of Dreamkeepers as more of an animated film, only it's in a book. And if you want to know what kind of film it would be, um, you know, I guess just listen to what our readers think. What really drew me in to this series initially um, was the art style. I was browsing webcomics and discovered this thing that was... It, it was pretty unique, you know, compared to a lot of the other comics that I could pick up in the store or, you know, I could find, you know, anywhere on the web. It, it, it was pretty, I should say, but that wasn't enough to really get me invested. So I laid off it for a while until I actually, for some reason, started reading the webcomic. And when I started reading that, I, I was like, eh, I'll, I'll try it. And so I bought the comic. And I was just perplexed. What is happening to me? I'm, I'm invested. I'm engaged. The, the, the characters are just wild. And their designs, you, you can tell just by the designs of some of the people in this, this weird world that the creators are having a wild time designing these people and putting fantastic words into their mouth. So yeah, I, I love it. You should too! I discovered Dreamkeepers by chance, just a few weeks before the first volume was published. At the time, I'd been fairly new on the graphic novel scene. I'd read a few titles, mainly by large publishing companies. By necessity, anything that has been done by a large company was putting a lot of importance on what was going to sell. That was what first stood out to me in the Dreamkeepers books. Since they're entirely self-published, they have no pressure to manipulate their stories into something insipidly marketable. When I read the first volume, I was so surprised to find adult content and language in a story that wasn't glaringly off-limits to the younger audience. It was the first time I'd come across anything in the sequential art medium that was allowed to do entirely as its story dictated. Because at the end of the day, that was what was driving its makers. Vivid Publishing and Dreamkeepers exist because David and Liz Lilly knew what industry and marketability and big-name storytelling was like, and they decided the story that mattered to them deserved better than that. If you have any interest at all in checking out Dreamkeepers, the first volume is free on our site. Uh, 98 pages of full-color story, free. And there's a webcomic on top of that, of course, and, well, you'll find it all. So, have fun, and we hope to see you around. Only one thing stands between the darkness and carnage.